So this evening we have a presentation uh, by the Park Service uh, regarding their new water safety initiatives. So we welcome uh, Ingrid and Ron. Thank you. I feel like the full house is because Ron and I are here. But I feel like, oh, it's true. It's true. We'll have an encore performance next yeah. month. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I want to thank you guys for having us here today um, to talk about what it says the National Park Service is water safety initiative. And I just want to kind of refute that in that it's not just our water safety program. This is a, a team effort. It's a partnership. Um, Upper Delaware could not do what we do without all of our key players. So uh, we have the Upper Delaware Council as part of our water safety team. We've got um, the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. We've got um, oh, oh, yeah, so New that's DC. New York DEC. And I'm proud to say that as far as the Park Service goes, we have somebody from every division that's part of our water safety program. But this is a team, it's a team effort. So it's not just us. So I'm representing everybody that's part of our Water Safety um, Committee. Do I just push like this? Yeah. Can we kill the lights? Oh, okay. All right, Ron, I'm going to turn yeah, it sure. over to you. Great. Okay. Okay. Hello, those who don't know me, I'm Ron Babis, uh, law enforcement ranger here at Upper Delaware. Uh, I'm also uh, the Upper Delaware Park. Uh, uh, volunteer coordinator or uh, volunteer coordinator, uh, water <laughs> coordinator for the park. Um, so unfortunately, we're we're behind here a little bit. We did have uh, one drowning in May, um, so we were at 78 now. Um, uh, there's a little correction on there, but um, in 2022 we had three drownings. Unfortunately, uh, on August 27th we had a drowning of 21 year old male uh, swimming in Pond Eddy. Uh, he was not wearing a life jacket and river height was very low at 2.86. Um, we didn't have a lot of rain last year, so the river was, was low most of the year last year. It's not all of it, of our busy season. Um, September 3rd, river height was at 3.14, found the average summer level uh, at end of summer. Uh, 47 year old male swimming at Landers Minnesink got caught in the current on the PA side. Uh, no PFD, despite the efforts of people trying to get to him and throw a rope to him. Um, he went under the water and did not resurface. Uh, we found him a, a, a little, a couple hours later in that area, which is a pretty popular swimming area. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of incidents do happen in that area over the years. Um, September 8th was a, an interesting one. River height was high that day, 6.69. Uh, mandatory wear was in effect that day. Um, 47 year old male in a fishing boat. Uh, had tipped over in Mill River Rapids. They made it almost to the top of Cherry Island and a uh, boat rolled over. Both of them were able to make it to shore uh, to the island. Um, however, their life jackets were in their boat and everything went down river. And then they tried to go across that to 97 on the New York side. The water was very high coming around the island there and the current was really, really strong. And uh, one guy made it to, to the mainland. The other guy had struggled and started going down river and then the water flushed him down river down under the number two bridge and it, it lost sight of him. Um, and he was found, it, it took a while to find him, it was a couple of weeks to find him. Uh, he was down, recovered down in uh, behind like Lowe's, that area uh, in, Mont in Montague, New Jersey. Uh, so that's our, so our common causes. So this year we've only had one and I hope it stays that way and we have, we'll have no more droughties ever. Uh, amen. Um, <laughs> So we did a, a very safe Fourth of July weekend. We didn't have any incidents that I know of. Um, so we, we survived the big fourth, uh, kind of like our Super Bowl of the year. <laughs> That's what I call it. <laughs> um, so not wearing the PFD is our common causes. Obviously, you want everybody to wear their, their PFD when they go out in the river. Uh, swimming and wading and, and feeling of no need to wear. Looks very, the river looks very calm and inviting. Uh, however, there is a current underneath there that people aren't aware of. It's not a swimming pool. It's not a lake. Uh, we do have current in the river, in, 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 in pools, and also in, in obviously the rapids. Um, uh, people choose to take off their, their PFD to swim. Um, they're going on a boating trip, they get hot, take their life jacket off, and then go for a swim and end up having trouble. Um, improperly worn, I mean, not, not buckled correctly, just wearing it, 
open, loose, um, and also the proper size. So an adult wearing a child's life jacket is not going to keep you up. Um, I've seen an adult have a child's life jacket just on his arm. Big muscle guy. Just had it around his arm. Child, child's life jacket. Not going to help him at all. Uh, or, or a child wearing adult life jacket. That's just going to slide right off, right off if they go in the water. Um, also, another issue we have on the river, obviously, alcohol and drugs. Uh, is there getting intoxicated on the river and the decision and judgment are affected? Uh, so, a lot of times with our drownings, also with this, when we get our toxicology report back on our, our victims, it shows up that they were intoxicated or had some kind of drug or other influence in their system that was a contributing factor to uh, what happened. So, that was our. You doing NCS? Okay. Uh, National Canoe Safe Patrol is our, our volunteer organization. Um, we have about 70 to 80 members now that belong to NCSP. Um, the, they're, we're, they're a partner organization with us, so they patrol the river, different parts of the river. They patrol our dangerous areas of the river, uh, our swimming areas, our rapids areas. Uh, they kind of stay, they'll stage there and, and watch people go through go through the rapids or visitors and and whatnot and keep keep those areas safe. Um, it, it, it allows us to increase patrols. Uh, as a, our staff, we, we we do the best we can with our staff, but this gives us a lot more, a lot more um, places to be on the river for the busy days and the weekends. And um, and uh, we had probably eighteen to twenty volunteers for this holiday weekend. So that's really nice. We put about four or five patrols out just with them, in conjunction with our our staff as well. So we have a lot of eyes out there, and a lot of people helping people with tip over boats. And uh, at the, the rapids areas where a lot of these incidents occur, uh, the folks who come up here from either the city or don't have the experience uh, on the river, they, they tip over their canoes and kayaks and we're able to get them back in their boat and situate them, get them, get them going again. Uh, if they want to continue, I've seen people say, oh, I'm done. That, that's, it. that's it for me. I don't know. So... Um, so, so uh, like I mentioned before, targeted patrols uh, in our in our danger areas, increased patrols the weekends and holidays. Uh, they're a critical partner in assisting us with visitor life and safety, which you'll see in our next slide. Uh, as far as the amount of contacts these folks make to people, amount of rescues they make, and you may not even hear about it. And we may have had more incidents if these these of our folks were out there doing things like the things that if we had no drownings, could we have five? We could have. We'll never know, but we had zero. That's what we want. Yeah. So when these people make contact with somebody who's not wearing a life jacket, mm -hmm. right? What happens? Do they advise them to put one on? And what are some of the responses? I'm sure they're not pleasant. With well, well, NCSP, some people <laughs> will, will adhere to them and, and they will put the life jacket on. Some may even put it on before they even get to them. They'll see them coming up to them. <laughs> they have to wear it. Oh, <laughs> Kennedy told me I have to wear a life jacket. I'm going to put it on. Scram won't put it on. Well, that's good. Yeah. So that, that's some of, that is the response. Others say, I got mine with me, and I, I know that the rules and regulations, I don't need to wear it, I have it with me. Yeah. But they'll, they'll check and make sure they have it in their vessel. Right. Yeah. But you know, they can't make them put it right. on. They'll suggest that you probably should put it on, or you're going, you're coming up to a rapid here. Mm -hmm. I, I suggest you put your life jacket on, just get through that rapid. Yeah. Yeah. But they're the white So they have contacts and, and, and they verbal do. contacts. Verbal contacts, and they like, count all those too in their, in their statistics in the day. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm also the MPS liaison with National Park Service, along with, with Ingrid. Um, we meet in the morning um, over at Zane Gray, usually, and see who and the VR are our patrols for the day and our assignments for them. Um, we, if we know something's going on at Landers, and they're going to put a lot of people out in the water that day. We may put more people at Skinner's to, uh, to handle the influx of certain, if we're, if we're aware of something that's, that's happening that day. Um, also, briefings and debriefings we have with NCSP, um, preseason and postseason logistics. I know they help out with the sojourn, mm -hmm. but provide safety for the sojourn. Um, some of them are some of them are, are also medical EMTs and and different different levels of EMS. So that's always great to have an extra hand in that when you're dealing with somebody. Because if I'm by myself, most of the rangers work by ourselves. So if I have somebody else that's Medical, just like myself, I'm an, EM, I'm an EMR. It's great to have somebody to help me to get something for me or assist me with a with a victim that's having some issues. Um, and I, I mentioned that uh, media data for patrols. 
So here's our, our like I mentioned before, here's our, our patrol stats from the NCSP last year. Um, every patrol, they get a bat, they'll get a bag of radio and an extra set of batteries, and they'll get a, a an information. Um, it's like a, a a sheet to fill out for the day, the day shift. So they fill this all out, everything, all the contacts they made for the day, and they turn it into us, and then we compile it and come up with this for the year. And uh, so you see here, we got over over four thousand contacts. Um, in July, that, that's one of, one of our busiest times of the season. July and August are our busy. Uh, so you got 66 rescues, 40 boat overs that work, and then they, that's when they call us. So we've been called eight, six. That's the times they call us. The 24th of the year they call us, and uh, these just just what we know of. Maybe they forgot to write some down. I don't know. This is what. Yeah. So you got over 10,000 contacts. That that's a really good job. Uh, then comparable to 19, and uh, obviously we had our COVID year here, which is a great, that was a crazy year. <laughs> a lot of local traffic because you can't go nowhere, can't do nothing. People are about to kill each other at their houses because they can't, they want to get out and get outside. This was, you yeah, know, we were it. We were open for business. They were all here. Um, <laughs> so that's just some of our, our statistics. And we'll have 2023 is next year. Life jacket wear study. You want me to do sure. It? Okay. So um, we just want to mention the, the life jacket wear rate study. This is important to, to us. We've been doing um, this since 2011, correct? Yeah. Um, and, and we partner with the U.S. Coast Guard. And basically, it's just like these picture pictures show you here. We sit, we hopefully have two people, we sit under a tree. And we are gathering data. So we're looking at what is the vessel that people are in? What is the gender of the people? Are they wearing their life jackets? What is the river height? Um, and all of this gives us information um, to uh, really kind of to see whether we are doing the job that we need to, to do. And um, I mean, it's really nice how you can't be just sitting there watching the, the river traffic um go by um but the national average for wearing life jackets this is just for adults is 19.5 percent and if you look at upper delaware we're at last year we were at four almost 52 percent um so we are doing really well would we like that higher absolutely we would um, but it just shows us that the people that are coming here are making the effort. They are wearing their, their life jackets. And last year we did a really good job. We did over almost 3,800 um, observations on, on the river. But this just gives us that data that we need to, to really see if we are doing what we, what we need to do. And I do know that Carrie didn't mention that we are looking for volunteers. So anybody that has a spouse, a friend, a partner that would like to just sit at our four different locations, let me know and I'll be glad to um, help you out with that. And if you want me to come with you, I'll sit under a tree with you for four hours as, as well. We can get to know each other better. Um, so that's that's just one very important tool that we, we have. Um, was this you, high water alert? Yeah, yeah, yes. I, yeah. So, uh, high water alerts that's at the very low bridge, it's getting kind of old there. Can't yeah. fix that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here's our high water alerts, uh, real quick. Uh, USGS offers a high water alert now. You can your email or text message the water now at usgs.gov. So, you want to take that down, and uh, it, it'll give you, you got to go on the site and get the number of the gauge you want. Uh, to, to add to your phone, and then it, it'll give you automated responses within minutes as, as the gauge changes to let you know hey, it's going to be this level today, or it's over over a uh, an average level. It's going to be higher than average level. Um, so we have we have that. We also have a uh, an eight hundred number you can call too that we we do every day. Uh, the, the river hotline. River hotline. Yeah. yeah. River hotline. yeah. Um, so I think that the, yeah, the, the water alert, I'm sure Evan is, is on this and gets the, the alerts. Sometimes nice. it can be downright annoying, it, it especially <laughs> oh, goes geez. off after over six feet every hour. You're getting <laughs> an alert, which is really, really good um, because it allows you to, to know what's going <clears throat> out there. 
Yeah. Any questions on that? That's kind of it's kind of a new thing has started here for us. Um, these are Adams. Yeah, Adams. We're going to talk about Adams. So I'm sure that some of you, um, we try to do different things. We try to get the message out in different ways. Um, some of you might have seen, like if you were going up 97, I know you guys, Jenny, you know, you've seen our billboard right there um, by the Roebling Bridge on Route 97. Um, we also had last year one on Route 6, and we also had one on Route um, 652. Um, but we decided this year to kind of shake it up a little bit. Um, and we do partner with Adams Outdoor Advertising. Um, we do um, rent the, the billboards, but they do give us a third one free. So, which is really, really nice. And then they designed this new one for us right here. That's a great design. Yeah, and I think it's very eye-catching. I think it's more eye-catching than the one on yes. 97. And I have to tell you that Jamie told me the story this morning. She was at a at a picnic over the weekend and somebody was talking about these billboards on route you know 652 about the life jackets and they were very positive comments and then she definitely raised her hand and said oh that's me I did them, them but I think they, they are definitely reaching um the the target our audience that we have um it shows you wearing the life jacket the activity um, and I think I think it really does does the job there. You can't miss these when you guys walk into the UDC because they're right there, right in your face. Um, so we have developed different signages over the year. We have adopted the the wear it message. So you've probably seen those on the the lawn signs. We developed our tagline: um, fishing, boating, swimming, floating. Um, and this is all part of the National State Voting Council. So we kind of adopted theirs, but made it um, our own. And last summer, um, we had one of our interns develop these new signs to, to again, trying to really um, kind of hone in on why people um, are not wearing life jackets and why they should, right? So it's wearing it for your family. It's not just a lot of, I think a lot of the people that aren't wearing, especially the younger group, um, they think they're invincible. Like they can swim across the river, nothing's going to happen to them. And if anybody's dealt with, with a drowning situation, you know, it's very tragic um, and it's, it's a ripple effect. It's not just the individual, but it's everybody that they come in contact with. Um, so we wanted to, to really um, bring it home. So wear it for your family, wear it for your friends. And then the different activities that you might, especially the swimming, as we all know, that's our number one drowning activity on, on the river. Um, and, and so these are, again, very eye-catching. I think I like the colors. And then again, we tied it right back into those billboards um, that Adams. So um, they took the ones, we sent all these to Adams, and then they developed that, that around. Yeah, I think they, they really did a good job, um, Corinne. And then we just want to plug the UDC and thank you for recognizing Corinne um, for the work that she she did as well as um, the the uh, life saving award. I think I'm talking about this one. Sure. Again. Yeah. sure. <laughs> Very right. So anytime we can get media and and um, getting the information out, so we work with. Um, Bold Gold Media, Wayne Memorial Hospital, the Chamber of Commerce, WJFF, um, the partnership that we have with the um, Pocono Mountain Television Network, the Visitors Bureau. Um, I just should have, I didn't, I failed to mention as far as these signs go. Um, you can see that we have them in, in Spanish and we also have them in Russian. So we took a look at who our visitors are that speak specific. The, the majority of the different languages in Russian and, and Spanish were were the top two. Um, so again, anytime that we can promote that locally, um, we are all all about it. And then this one is yeah, are you doing sure, this one? Yeah. Okay. These are our life jacket loader stations. Uh, we have several life jacket loader stations uh, throughout the park. Uh, I believe we're going to about five now, five or six. Six of the Skinners, 
uh, Skinner, Lander Skinners, and also at the entrance to the Skinners Falls Rocks. Um, these are loaded with different size life jackets that the park purchases for people to, to borrow for the day and return. What's the return? Well, that's a good that's a question. question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the return rate to the loaner life jacket stations is pretty good because they are in spots where people are camping. So they're like at loops, they are well, Kittatinny yeah. loops, Kittatinny Riverside. They are at, as, as um, Ron said, going towards the rocks at Skinner's. So they're kind of one-stop shop and then the people are right there. And then we've still, and I'm sure Ron was gonna mention this, I'm stealing his thunder. Um, but we put these at locations where we had swimming related drownings. And that's why we picked the specific locations that, that we did. Um, so our return rate at these locations is pretty good. Also at our, at our every kiosk, we have four kiosks in the park. We have a loaner life jacket box and they're loaded with life jackets to issue to folks that either have forgotten one or show up them without missing, missing a couple of them, we can issue them life jacket for the day and we also take them on the river and, uh, and on the river and then i take some with me and i have some my my vehicle uh to issue to folks that are short one or two or so i would say the return rate for those those are not, not as high not as high but the way that we look at it you know if you're going to take it right we hope that you're going to use it right so that's we do have we do have a, a loss. Um, it's not real high, but we do know that there is a loss, and we do hope that if they're going to take them, they're going to use them in another body of water. So yeah, that's, that's our hope. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So it's the it's the price of doing business with with them. I know at Mongop we have a pretty good return rate. When I come back on Mondays, they're usually hanging there outside. Mm -hmm. I go in to collect them all up and stow them away mm -hmm. for them and. Uh, so Mongoff's doing pretty good. We're also working on getting return, a return box down at West End. So where the locals go down there, they get out. They don't, if they're not driving back up, they can just drop them off in the, in the box there. Mm -hmm. I think we'll get a lot more that way too. Yeah. It's a cheap investment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But that and that are worse. One, one thing you did include, there was a drowning that wasn't in yes. you guys, the 21st at yes. West End. Correct. Yes, yeah. there was uh, there was another drowning at yeah. West End. That doesn't, it's not in the park, so, you know, it's not including your statistics. No, but it's, it's just it's still a drowning. Drowning. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. And they, they've reopened West End Beach this year. They have lifeguards there. Yeah. It's a whole, it was a big fiasco on the fourth. I know the fourth one went down there. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I didn't. I don't really deal with that area. It's the <laughs> um, That's very much too. So I, I, oh. I, I thought I had put the, the last slide in, but I didn't. So we're going to okay. drop kick and puns on, on this one. Um, so I guess we're now here for the main event. Oh, yeah. Right? The main event is we're unveiling our water safety video that we have been talking about for like months, if not well over a year. Um, and I do want to take a moment and thank the Pocono Mountain, Pocono Television yeah. Network. Um, they did all the videoing for us. They did all the editing. They put it all together. Yeah. Um, we, we were just the talent. For yeah. a bit. <laughs> um, but I think they did a, a really good job on it, and, and I would be remiss not to, to mention everything that they did. We did two versions. We did an English version. We also did a Spanish version, and I have to thank Floor um, from, she was at Steamtown at the time. Now she's at Gateway for doing the Spanish version. She translated it and everything, and, and she was one that um, you'll see, but we're just going to show the English one unless people want to see the Spanish. Hold on.
Hi, and welcome to Upper Delaware Scenic and Recreational River. Here at the National Park Service, it is our job to preserve and protect the river for future generations. The Delaware is the longest free-flowing river east of the Mississippi. Our section is 73.4 miles long with 14 sets of rapids. The Delaware River is a great place for many recreational activities, like rafting, canoeing, kayaking, and fishing. On average, two people drown each year. In order to be safe and have fun on the water, be sure to understand the following guidelines and recommendations. One of the best ways to protect yourself on this river is by wearing a properly fitted life jacket. Not a single person has drowned on this river while wearing a properly fitted life jacket. It should look like this. With the straps tightened, it should be secure and unable to slide up your body. These are examples of not properly fitted life jackets. Life jackets have different sizes depending on the user's weight. There is infant, youth, child, adult, and adult oversized. The weight is displayed on the inside. The right size is necessary for the life jacket to do its job. Life jackets are required for everyone when boating on the river and must be readily accessible. This includes boats, canoes, kayaks, rafts, paddle boards, tubes, and any inflatable device. We highly recommend wearing it for the entire time on the river. Children 12 years and younger must wear the life jacket at all times while on the river. When the river is over six feet, then everyone must wear their life jackets when on the river. Do not tie a life jacket into your boat, tube, or use a life jacket to tie together two boats or tubes. The life jacket must be readily accessible if needed. Swimming is a great way to cool off during a hot summer day. Swimming uses a lot of energy. Do not be overconfident in your ability. Skilled swimmers have drowned trying to swim across the river. Wearing a life jacket would prevent this. There are no designated swimming areas on the river. There is no lifeguard to come and save you. Swimming is the number one drowning risk. Always wear a life jacket when swimming or wading in the river. Swim at your own risk. If you are swimming, you should be conscious of your surroundings. If you are approaching a rapid, you should try to get back to your vessel, as swimming through a rapid can result in injury. If you do find yourself swimming through a rapid or strong current, keep your legs up, float on your back, and point your toes downstream. Don't panic and slowly make your way to shore. Foot entrapments can happen anywhere on the river. When your foot is trapped, the current of the water will push you down underneath it. It is best to avoid the situation by keeping your feet up with your stomach also facing up. Closed-toed shoes are highly recommended. The rocks under the water can be slippery and sharp. If the vessel you are in flips, you should move yourself upstream of your kayak, canoe, or raft and wait for calm water before attempting any other action. Always put your safety first. The river's water level changes constantly from heavy rain or lack of rainfall. During low river levels, more rocks are exposed, creating more obstacles. Rapids will be more intense with higher water levels. Be on the lookout for strainers and sweepers in the river. A strainer is an object in the body of the river. A sweeper is an object hanging over the river by the shore. Most likely this will be a tree branch that has fallen. If there has been severe weather, such as a storm or high winds before your trip, be extra careful when navigating the river. Be aware that the Delaware River is surrounded by private property. If you choose to stop along the riverbank, be respectful and stay close to shore. Do not stop where there are houses. When in doubt, if somewhere is private property, do not stop. Find another location. There are plenty of other spots along the river. Glass bottles are not permitted on the river. Broken glass is dangerous to other visitors, pets, and wildlife. We hope you enjoy your time at Upper Delaware. Remember to stay hydrated, wear sunscreen, and bring some salty snacks. And don't forget to wear your life jacket. It can save your life. Wear it for your family and your friends. Be safe, have fun, and we'll see you on the water. I'm just going to cast this. This also around this has nothing to do with water safety, other than we'll have a water safety table as our Zangray Festival. So that's just our calendar of events. And I hope to see you guys at the museum on the 15th. Don't go away. You know, this is the park service at their best. And, you know, when you look at the statistics, it's you know troubling to see the few fatalities, but you wonder how many lives have been saved, and you can't calculate that. It's 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 just an investment on on uh, on life. So um, on behalf of the, the council, we thank you and appreciate these initiatives because they're they're critical 
especially thinking of the, the volume of people now that are on the river. Aaron, quite honestly, I was involved in part of our board of work here as case, and I'm sure there's no statistics, but it's helped a lot because people were going out and out. We rescued, I had a two year old that their parents had in March. You know, that yeah, they had to go rescue the little man, and it was a two year old. No, we, we appreciate it, and it's not so visible. You know, it, it's not like your presence on the river and these programs are. are uh, are obvious, but um, we know they're there and we appreciate it. And uh, on behalf of UBC, we thank you for your presentation and gratitude. Well, thank you.